while everything is revolving around the online Olympiad, Anish Giri went to Russia and played at the Leo Tolstoy Cup and he's still playing there. But on day one, he managed to score a massive 5 out of 5. He played 5 games and won all of them. And that too against super strong opposition like Boris Gelfand, Nikita Vitugov, Maxim Matlakov, Alexienko, Nodirbek. It was simply phenomenal. Just to show you a couple of pictures from there. This is Anish uh, over there at the Leo Tolstoy Cup. Uh, this is also the playing hall. It's on a stage there and uh, 10 players are playing. And there's commentary there outside, a lot of people following it. And it's at the Leo Tolstoy Museum in Russia. So that's how the event is. It's 15 minutes plus 10 second increment. And what I have done here is I have taken a few, uh, there are 13 positions from Anish's games that I have taken out. And I'm going to ask you to guess his moves. So are you ready for it? Okay, let's go. First one was his victory against Boris Gelfand. Uh, and we had a semi slav on the board and it was this position, Anish is white. What do you play in this position with white? White to move. So a natural move here uh, would be e4 and I think this has, this could be played and uh, I guess it has been played many, many times. But Anish here played a very nice move which has only been played 11 times which is g4 and Pragnananda has himself played this with Ritwik Raja. So if you found the move g4, a full point to you and congratulations for that. The next uh, position arrived when opponent played the move h6. White to move here, what did Anish play? I actually like this uh, next decision very, very much. <clears throat> so Anish is a pawn up right now if you count the pawns. And what Gelfand wanted to do is that if white takes, he wants to take back and put his rook on g8 and attack the bishop on g2. So what did Anish do? Instead of letting this rook open up via h file or g file, he decided to play the move g6. Very interesting move. And uh, let's say I think his idea would have been that after f takes g6 to continue normally. But it's just that this rook cannot be activated easily. So uh, a very good uh, interesting decision by Anish. Bishop e7 was played in the game. And the game went on. And then we reached another critical moment here where black played the move king e7. It's white to play. Try to figure out how did Anish finish off the game. This was an important moment uh, because Anish managed to find a very powerful move. And if you did that as well, congratulations. E4 is the winning move here. Uh, but here's your next question after Bishop B3. Firstly, he cannot take the pawn because after takes, <coughs> it's a check and then you lose the E4 bishop. So Bishop B3 is the move. And what does white do for your fourth point? In Anish's game, what do you do? Yep, the move is e5, trapping the bishop, and after takes, take, rook takes a4, uh, white managed to win this game very nicely. So that was the first victory for Anish, <clears throat> and those were the first four questions. I hope you were able to answer them effectively. Let's go to the next game, slightly more complex, slightly longer. This was his game against Kirill Alexienko. And the first question to you comes not for Anish, but for Alexienko. It was a night or And uh, it is white to move here. What do you do in this position? A very uh, important moment in the game. Because Anish got a very bad position out of the opening. And uh, somehow, how do you continue? So, here, Alexienko played bishop f1, which was a mistake. Because after rook b8, there was pressure on b2. And after b4, 
came the move knight e4. Very cool. And the c3 pawn was lost because of the attack here. Hence, the right move here, and if you found it, well done, was not bishop f1, but rook a3. And the point being that after rook e b8, b4, knight e4, queen e3, the c3 pawn is very well protected. So that's the key point over here. Okay, now for your sixth point, Anish managed to somehow, you know, get a pawn, then get into a rook endgame, which was winning for him. What do you do here with black, black to play? So Anish here thought for a while and he thought, well, I'm a pawn up. I mean, maybe it was time pressure. Uh, so I don't know whether he thought for a while, but uh, he thought he's a pawn up and he should win this. And so he took the pawn. And if you did as well, then you have made a mistake. The right move is king e4 and black will win this because he has a passer here and so on. But king takes f4. Why is this a mistake? Next question to you. This is the seventh one. Uh, how did uh, how did Alexienko create problems for Anish? Well, the move here by Alexienko was rook takes d5. Very, very strong move. Uh, and the main point is after rook d5, it's a stalemate. Beautiful. And if you found it, well done. So the game was going towards a draw. And then a mistake occurred here. Black pawn is about to queen. White pawn is also a few steps away. And here it was important to give a check. However, white played rook king h7. And so for your eighth point in this challenge, what did Anish play here? Black to move. If you push the pawn, that's not going to be right because you get a check and then you will lose the pawn and I'll then get your rook for the, for my pawn. So the right move here is the very, very subtle rook g5. You attack the pawn and let's say if he saves it, now you push and it's a bridge building technique. Uh, black is winning. So rook g5, if you found it, full point, that was the only winning move there. So with this, Anish moved on to two points. And now for the next game against Maxim Matlakov, he played the Italian with white and I think it was a very instructive game. You should go over that game. Uh, I think it was beautifully played by Anish Giri. Uh, but we won't uh, go through that entire game. We will go to the final moment of the game which was at this point Anish playing with white. What did he do here? White to play and win. So if you look at it White is totally dominating and there are many ways to win. But the cutest and the nicest is knight to d6. Because after pawn takes, you go queen h7. And there is no way to stop queen h8 checkmate. Because king e7 is controlled by the knight. So you have to give up your queen, but that is lost. Another way to win this position could also be knight e7. The main point is that you free your queen to come in. This is slightly more complicated because there is king e8 as a defense here check and uh, maybe he goes back like this but then even a move like f4 is just crushing you know just complete domination on the position and white is winning but the solution of anish was uh, the most elegant which was to go knight d6 here and then checkmate over here so that was just one point from this game Let's go to uh, the next one against uh, Nikita Vichugo. And uh, I think this one was a very nice one as well. There are a few positional questions here. Okay. So Anish is playing with white. Vichugo is black. And the first question is here. He played the... Uh, Vichugo is a big French expert and Anish played the advanced variation. White to play here, what do you do as white? I like this move. It may not be the best move. There may be others as well, but just as a concept. So, firstly, if you think about it, white has a weakness here on c3. Also, the c4 square is slightly weak. But um, 
White's plan is to push the pawns on the king side. So it's clear that the knight should move. But where? And so Anish realized that his knight would be best placed on e2 where it will defend the c3 pawn. And that's the reason why he played the move knight g1. And if you found this move, you are a great positional player. If you found g4 also, you'll get the point because that's the most. But the idea eventually is to move the knight away. And I think knight g1, knight e2 is a great idea. Okay, next question comes here. Anish manages, managed to create that pawn storm, uh, storm on the king side and broke through with his rook. What should white do in this position? Yeah, if you found this positional pawn sacrifice, excellent job, rook, uh, pawn to f5, because now there is an attack here that is created, so you have to take, e takes f5, and the point of it is that you get your knight to f4 with the attack on d5, which cannot be defended. So a great positional pawn sacrifice. And lastly, there came a moment here where it's white to play. Knight end games, as we know, are tremendously tricky, but Anish managed to uh, find his way here. White to play, what do you do? <coughs> so the only winning move here is c4. And if you found this excellent, because if you take, take king e6, king g6, he's going to push his pawn next. Uh, I mean, black will at the right time push, but whenever white pushes, he will give up his knight for the pawn. And that's not going to uh, work out. And so that's the reason why this is uh, a winning, I mean, this is a drawn position. So you have to keep material on the board. Uh, I was just trying to think if knight a4, how do you draw? Well, you take d7 and now a check and it's a draw. c4 and after king h4, king e6, pawn push and now you have an extra pawn. And here after king c6 he resigned but after king b5 it's anyway winning and white wins. He sacrifices his knight for the pawn and then he queens his pawn. Right, so this was again a nice win uh, for Anish. He was 4 out of 4 and then he met the little Abdul Sattar of Nadirbek against whom he had lost in the World Cup. So he had to be slightly careful here and he played the Grunfeld again a new idea in the opening. Uh, by Anish, he played this move uh, c5, which is not very common here. Uh, the main move is bishop g7 in this, but he played this and now bishop e3. Anish is a pawn down here. How does black create play here? Black to play. Yeah, if you thought about moves like knight e5 or knight d4, they are not good enough. You know, you're not creating enough pressure. The move here is f5 and kudos to you if you, if you found it because now there is real pressure with the rook joining into the game. So he played h3 here which is natural but after take take and f4, knight d4 check and rook d8, it was already big trouble because now f3 is hanging. I also analyzed if e takes f5, very important move here is g takes f5 h3, bishop h5, king f1, f4, rook ad8 and black has immense counterplay here and a lot of compensation. So that's how Anish won five of his games. Uh, by the way, the game against Nordirbeck was beautifully played by him uh, after he won the pawn. He won several pawns, you know, in this position. His knight was completely dominant, took here, then took here, then took here, just cleaned up everything. And he managed to win. So with this, uh, Anish Giri reached 5 out of 5. And there are 4 more rounds today. He also gained 38 ELO points in rapid rating. So his rating now has moved to 2750. He's world number 17, I believe, or 18. And uh, well, if he continues in this form, he may well enter top 10 in the world. Will he be able to score 9 out of 9? We will see. But for now, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section as to how many points you scored out of 13 uh, and I hope you learned from this games. This is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye.